Hello everyone, in this lecture, I'm going to show to you how to derive the mean, the variance, and the moment generating function for the g squared distribution. g squared distribution is a continuous probability distribution with the following probability density function or PDF. Function of x given the parameter p, which we call as the degrees of freedom, is equal to 1 over b gamma of p over 2 times 2 raised to p over 2 then times x raised to p over 2 minus 1 times e raised to negative x over 2 where x is defined from 0 to infinity p is defined to be integers 1, 2, etc. Now this big gamma here is a gamma function defined to be big gamma of alpha is equal to the integral of t raised to alpha minus 1 e raised to negative t dt from 0 to infinity. Now let us derive the mean. Mean is equal to the expectation of x and expectation of x is equal to the integral of x times the probability density function. In this case, we're going to use this one. Then dx, then this is from 0 to infinity. So we have here 0 to infinity. Then we can move out this constant from integration. So we have here this constant in here. We can combine both x, this one and this one. So we have here x raised to p over 2 minus 1 plus 1 is p over 2. Then the rest of the terms e raised to negative x over 2 dx. Now let us use this gamma function to simplify this one. Removing this integral and making this one in terms of gamma function. To do that, let us make them similar. Let this t to be equal to this x over 2. So we have here let t equals to x over 2. Then x will become 2 times t. Then dx will become the derivative of this 2t which is 2dt. Then substituting this in here will get this constant in here. Then integral of for x we can use this one 2t in here. Then for x over 2 we can use this t so we have here t. Then for dx we can use this one 2dt which is this one. Then if x is 0. From here, t is 0, so we have here 0. And if x is infinity, infinity over 2 is still infinity, so we have here infinity. Then we can move out the constants from integration. This one, 2 raised to p over 2 will be this one, then 2 in here. Then what we're left with inside the integration are t raised to p over 2, e raised to negative t, and dt. Now, if you compare this one to this one, they are still not similar because this is alpha minus 1 while this one is p over 2. Now let this alpha minus 1 be equal to p over 2, which is this one. Let alpha minus 1 equals to p over 2. Then alpha will become p over 2 plus 1. Then using this for our gamma function, we have big gamma of alpha. This alpha is this one. So we have here big gamma of p over 2 plus 1 then equals to integral of t raised to for alpha minus 1 we can use this one p over 2 so we have here t raised to p over 2 then e raised to negative t dt e raised to negative t dt from 0 to infinity 0 to infinity now if you compare this one to this one they are the same so this one is big gamma of p over 2 plus 1 now in here we can cancel out 2 raised to p over 2 and 2 raised to p over 2 so this one which is this one is this one big gamma p over 2 plus 1 and this 2 in here and this one big gamma p over 2 to be in here. Then we can simplify this one using the recursive identity for gamma function. In this identity big gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha times big gamma of alpha. Now if you want a proof for this identity you can check out my video for this proof. I have provided the link in the description below so you can check it out. Now, if we let this alpha to be p over 2, which is this one, then this one will be alpha to be p over 2 and this one will be p over 2. Then, big gamma of p over 2 plus 1 over this big gamma of p over 2 will be p over 2. Then, this one will just be p over 2, which is this one. Then we can cancel out 2 and 2. 
then we're left with p as our mean. Now let us proceed with our derivation of variance. Variance originally has a formula, expectation of square of x minus expectation of x. And we have another formula which is this one, expectation of x squared minus square of expectation of x, which is derivable from this one. Now for this expectation of x, it is equal to the mean, which we derive to be equal to p. And for expectation of x squared, we haven't derived it yet, so we gotta derive it first to derive our variance. Now expectation of x squared is equal to the integral of x squared times the probability density function, which is this one, then dx, then from 0 to infinity, so we have here 0 to infinity. Then we can move out this constant from integration, so we have this constant. Then let us combine both x, so we have x raised to p over 2 minus 1 plus 2 is p over 2 plus 1. Then the rest of the terms, e raised to negative x over 2 dx. Now, similar to what we have done in our derivation of mean, let us use this gamma function to simplify this one, this integral. Now, let this t be equal to this x over 2. So, we have here let t equals to x over 2. Then, x will become 2t. Then, dx will become the derivative of this one, which is 2dt. Then, let us substitute this in here. We'll get for x, we're going to use this 2t in here. Then, for x over 2, we're going to use this t. So, we have here e raised to negative t. Then, for dx, we're going to use this one. So, we have here 2dt. Then, we can move out the constants from integration. So, for this 2 raised to p over 2 plus 1, so we have this one. 2 raised to p over 2 plus 1. Then, this 2 will be this one. Then what we're left with inside the integral will be t raised to p over 2 plus 1, then e raised to negative t dt. Now, we can cancel out 2 raised to p over 2 and the p over 2 in here. Then what we're left with is 2 raised to 1 times 2 which is 4. Now, if we compare this one to our gamma function, they are not exactly the same because this is alpha minus 1 while this one is p over 2 plus 1. So let this alpha minus 1 be equal to p over 2 plus 1. So we have here, let alpha minus 1 be equal to p over 2 plus 1. Then alpha will become p over 2 plus 1 plus 1 which is plus 2. Then this one, p over 2 plus 1, will become alpha minus 1. And if we compare this integral with this one, they are the same. So this one will become big gamma of alpha, which is this one. Then bring back the constants from here, we'll get this big gamma of alpha will become big gamma of p over 2 plus 2. Now to simplify this, let us use again the recursive identity for gamma function, which is this one. Then if we let this alpha b equal to alpha plus 1, so we have here this one will become alpha plus 1, and this one will become alpha plus 1, then this one will become alpha plus 1 plus 1 is alpha plus 2. Then alpha plus 2 will be this one, and big gamma of alpha plus 1 is this one, so we have here alpha plus 1 times alpha times big gamma of alpha. Then big gamma of alpha plus 2 over big gamma of alpha is equal to this alpha plus 1 times alpha. Now, if we let this alpha to be equal to p over 2, then we have big gamma of p over 2 plus 2 over big gamma of p over 2 is equal to this alpha as p over 2 and then plus 1 then times p over 2. Then observe that this one is the same with this one. So this one will become this one. So we have this one 4 times this one which is p over 2 plus 1 times p over 2. Now, if we factor out this 4 to be 2 times 2 and distribute this 2 in here, this 2 in here, we'll get, for this one we'll get p plus 2. Then this one p over 2 times 2 is p. 
then distributing this p in here will get p squared plus 2p for our expectation of x squared. Now we're ready for our variance. So variance has this formula. We can use this one. So for expectation of x squared, we have this one, p squared plus 2p. Then minus for expectation of x, our mean is equal to p, which is expectation of x. So we have p, then square of that. We can cancel out p squared and this one, p squared. So what we're left with is 2p as our variance. Now let us proceed with our derivation of the moment generating function. The moment generating function has the formula expectation of e raised to tx and expectation of e raised to tx is equal to the integral of e raised to tx times the probability density function which is this one. Then dx, this is from 0 to infinity so we have here 0 to infinity. Then let us move out this constant from integration so we have this one from here then x raised to p over 2 minus 1 then let us combine both exponentials this one and this one so we have here e raised to negative x over 2 then negative and minus will be plus dx which is coming from this one then dx from here then from 0 to infinity now similar to what we have done in our derivation of mean and variance let us simplify this integral using this gamma function now the t in here is different from our t in here, which is coming from here. Now let us use another variable instead to avoid this conflict. So let us use y instead of t for this gamma function. So we have here big gamma of alpha is equal to this integral of y raised to alpha minus 1 e raised to negative y dy from 0 to infinity. Now let us make this to be similar to this. Let this y to be equal to this one. So we have so y equals to x over 2 minus tx. Then let us collect this x from these terms. So we'll get 1 over 2 minus tx. Then x will become this y over this one, 1 over 2 minus t. Then let us multiply both this numerator and denominator by 2. So we'll have here 2y over 2 times this one is 1 minus 2t. Then dx is the derivative of this one, which is 2 over y minus 2t dy, since y is the only variable in here. Then let us substitute this in here. We'll get this constant in here. Then for x, let us use this one, 2y over 1 minus 2t. Then e raised to negative for this one. Let us use this y. So we have here y. Then for dx, let us use this one. So we have 2 over 1 minus 2t dy. Now for the limits, this and this, if x is 0, in here, y is also 0, so we have here 0. And if x is positive infinity, this one will become also positive infinity as long as this is positive. That is, if t is always less than 1 half. So we put here positive infinity for y on the condition that t is less than one half. Then let us move the constants outside of the integral. So this two over one minus two t in here, raised to p over two minus one, can be combined with this two over one minus two t in here. So we have here two over one minus two t, raised to p over two minus one plus one is p over two. Then what we're left with inside of the integral will be y raised to p over two minus one in here, then here e raised to negative y, then dy in here. Then if we compare this one to our gamma function, which is this one, they're not exactly the same because this is alpha minus 1 and this is p over 2 minus 1. So let this alpha minus 1 be equal to this p over 2 minus 1, which is this one. Then alpha will become p over 2 minus 1 plus 1 is p over 2. Then let us substitute this in here. So we'll have here alpha minus 1 instead of p over 2 minus 1. Then this one is exactly the same with our gamma function. Then this one will become big gamma of alpha. So we put here big gamma of alpha in place of this one. Then bringing back the constants from here, this alpha in here will be p over 2. So we have here 
p gamma of p over 2. Then we can cancel out p gamma of p over 2 and p gamma of p over 2. Then what we're left with is this one. Then our moment generating function will be this one which is from here. Now remember that we have a restriction in here. So we need to put that restriction in here. So to make this one valid as our moment generating function for k-squared distribution.